In this video, I'm going to go over how to get a Flux node up and running on top of a Hive OS rig. I like running all of my nodes and pretty much any of my Linux servers in Hive OS. And the reason to that is it makes it a lot easier to manage if I want to throw a couple uh, cores on some hashing for CPU mining, I can do that. And it just gives me a lot of flexibility and more importantly, easy management, right? I can come in and I can easily manage those servers, whether it's on my mobile device, whether, you know, I'm somewhere else. And so it's really nice. And so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to get a flux node up and running on Hive OS and kind of highlight the key differences between a normal install and some extra steps you have to take when you're using Hive OS. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hop over to, we've got this Flux node, which is a fresh install of Hive OS. We're still running an old version, but that's okay. And I'm gonna use Putty just because I prefer Putty. However, you can use Shell in a Box if you prefer. And we're gonna remote into the system. And we're going to use our default credentials of user and one. And then the first thing we need to do is we need to install some dependencies so that we can run our benchmarking utilities. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a disk expand, an apt update, apt upgrade. We're going to install sysbench, curl, and we're going to install npm. Now on HiveOS, in order to install npm, you have to explicitly install libssl 1.0 first. So we're going to go ahead and run this command. I'll include all the commands in the video description below. Go ahead and maximize this window. And we'll just uh, let these commands run and I'll see you back when it's done. Now that the dependencies are installed, we're going to start off by running a speed test. This is the same script that I've included in a previous video or I walked through how you could run a speed test from within HiveOS. So we're just going to let this download and execute. This uses speedtest.net and we'll run a somewhat interactive speed test here for us so we can see our download and upload uh, bandwidth. And we can see we got 85 megabits per second down. 93 megabits per second up, so that is good. 25 and 25 is the minimum for a Cumulus node. Uh, next up, we're going to run Sysbench, and we're going to benchmark a single thread. And the key number we're looking for here is at least 60 events per second. And that finished, and it was 82 events per second. So that is good. And the last preliminary test we need to do is test the SSD write speed. So we need at least 180 megabytes per second write speed. So let's see what the SSD does. And we're at 213. So it's close, but we're over the threshold, so that's good. Next up is our normal flux install. So we're just gonna go ahead and paste that. And we're, this will run the multi toolbox. And the first step will be to run the Docker installer. And then we'll switch to user and run the flux node installer. And this is all normal process for a flux node. Now there will be some things that we'll have to do towards the end of the video. So if you have set up a flux node before, uh, you can kind of follow the normal steps now and probably skip through to a later part of the video. But for those who haven't, we're gonna be, as soon as this downloads and runs, we're gonna be installing Docker and some, uh, like the Hello World Docker image and doing some additional configs, downloading the daemon, downloading the bootstrap, uh, getting the node actually up and running. So we're gonna start with option one. 
And under username, I like to do flux underscore node, but you can do anything you want. And then enter a password. Confirm it. And then we're going to, I'm going to pop open Zellcore over here on another screen. And we're going to grab our keys. We're going to need our uh, collateral information. So make sure you've already sent 1,000 flux to a given wallet. Head on over to uh, the app section of Zellcore and then the node section. And then it should already be flagged as a cumulus. You can just go ahead and click on it and go to edit. And you should be able to get your key information from there. So we'll let this finish installing the Docker. Should just be another minute. Now that the Docker setup is done, it's going to ask us if we want to switch to the user. Let's go ahead and just put in Y. And it switched over. And then we're going to run the multi toolbox again. And this time we're going to use option two. We've got to enter our password for our FluxNode account. And this is going to go ahead and download the daemon. And it's going to prompt us for some information here first that will be used to build the config file that basically is the identifying information for our collateral and our, basically our pub key for the node. Okay, now we need to enter our identity key along with the transaction ID and also the uh, index. And now we need to grab our Zelle ID. And now we need to grab our KDA address just in case we get any KDA rewards. Now we'll let this finish uh, doing its setup. You will see uh, this retrieve keys failed. We'll try again. Don't worry about that. It is just, it takes two iterations to successfully generate that. All right, now it's going to prompt us how we want to get the bootstrap file. And we're just going to say download from the source build. And this will go out to the Flux network and grab the bootstrap file. Uh, be patient. This will take some time to download, depend on your download speed. Uh, for me, it's taken anywhere between... 30 and 40 minutes to get through this step. Uh, you will see a progress bar here in a moment that will kind of show you um, the progress that's happening and the download speed. Uh, just wait, be patient, and wait till it is complete. Once the blockchain's done syncing, you'll get this pop-up asking if you want auto-update. Sure, you hit yes on that. And I don't do the alerts. Uh, but if you want to enable Discord or Telegram alerts, you can do that from here. And it's going to generate our config file. It's going to finish up the install, which is basically going to uh, restart the services and start benchmarking. So we'll let that finish the setup and let it run the benchmarks. And then I'll see you back when it's done. 
Now the install is done, and if we just double check here at our benchmarks, we can see 48 cores, uh, 62 gigs of RAM, uh, we got 465 mega, uh, that's, I actually think that's storage, yeah, that's the storage, sorry. Um, no hard drives. Our DD rate, which is the SSD speed, is 218, so that's good. And our events per second is 355, which is good. Uh, so it looks like everything is good. So now if we open up a browser window, copy this URL, and I'm actually not going to go to that URL, but I'm rather going to go to the internal IP because we haven't done any for, for, um, port forwarding or UPnP yet. So if we just hop over, we can see everything is good and head over to benchmarks, flex node, get info, uh, sorry, get benchmarks. We can see we're good here. Everything, everything's good. Now the next step is to uh, reboot and see if it's still working after a reboot. So let's go ahead and restart. Now that the system's rebooted, if we go over and take a look at the Flex dashboard, we can see our benchmark failed due to a configuration issue. So our next step is to figure out why. So let's start by checking the status of MongoDB. And here we can see it's failed, meaning it is stopped. We're going to run this command. Uh, and we need to run it sudo u mongodb user. And here we can see it's having a problem with the log file. The log file is under var log. HiveOS manages this folder. And if you create a subfolder under it, it will delete it on every reboot. So what we're going to do is we're going to redirect that. So I'm just going to create a new directory called slash mongodb log. And I am going to set the owner of that folder to be the MongoDB account. So we'll do C-O-C-H-O-N. Do MongoDB colon MongoDB. And we're going to do MongoDB log. Run that. Now if we rerun the command to run Mongo. Now what we need to do is we need to modify that config file. So we're going to do nano etc mongo d.conf and we want to change this system log file and we're going to change this to slash mongodb log slash and then it can create the mongod.log file within there do control x y to save Now we need to modify that config file. And this is where the log path, the log path is stored. And we want to change this to slash mongo mongodb log slash mongod.log. <clears throat> and this will cause the log file to be written to the new path. So we do control X and Y. And now if we try to run it, it looks like everything is good now. So we're just doing control C to close. We didn't get any error messages, so that's good. And if we do a, uh, we can just do a tail on slash mongodb log, slash mongodb log. Oh, sorry, we got to do a sudo tail on that. Here we can see. It created the file and it's right in the logs. So it looks like it's good now. So what we want to do is we want to just reboot. 
We're going to let this reboot. When it comes back up, it should start benchmarking itself again, and the benchmark should be successful. So let's validate that once it comes back up. It's back up now, and the benchmark's still running. So we'll just let this run till completion. All right, and so that resolved the issue. Everything is good, up and running. So we're good now. The only other thing that you may want to do is set up port forwarding. Uh, so if I log back in under the FlexNode account, you have two options. You can either do port forwarding or you can do UPnP. If you want to do UPnP, you'll just run the installer script again and select option uh, 14. It'll ask you what port you want to use, and you just set the port, and it should set it in your router. Uh, but that's it for this video. I just kind of wanted to walk you guys through how to get it up and running within Hive OS. And then if you hop on over to your dashboard, one thing that you may notice, we probably won't see it right away here, but you'll notice that your load average will be a little bit higher than normal, right? So normally you would have a load average. If you're mining on one thread, your load average be between one and two. Here you can see I hit a load average of three, but that's no problem at all. We've got 48 threads. So as long as we're less than 48, it's good. You can always adjust that in your Hive OS settings. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Uh, now under this circumstance, you could, we could take this and we could adjust these CPU threads up uh, using a, the bit sum calculator. So realistically right now we have just 47 set. Realistically we could probably set a lot of these. Uh, typically what I would do is I would leave the even numbers, so I would leave 0, 2, 4, 6, and then I would check the rest. So what that would do is that would kind of reserve the primary first four cores to flux, and then the rest of these we could mine on if we wanted to. Uh, on this specific server, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I have some other uses for this server that I'm going to do, uh, but that's it for the video. It's really simple. The toughest part really is just making sure you install the needed dependencies in the right order up front. And then after you get that Hive OS installed, you gotta um, you know, create a manual log folder and uh, modify the config file to write to that log folder. Uh, one caveat that I will put to this is if for some reason the Hive OS installer or in a future update, if they decide to change that log file, or if they decide to change that config file itself, which I don't see happening, but if they do, you may have to go in and remodify it to point to the new log file. But that's it. It should be something easy to monitor with like an uptime robot.